What's going on traders? I wanted to make a very quick crash course on how to use Webull, right? I know after everything that's happened with Robinhood lately, a lot of people have moved over to Webull, but they find the platform very complicated, very hard to use. And I ran across the issue when a lot of people on my Discord that were new to Webull didn't know how a lot of the features worked. So my goal by the end of this video is very simple. You guys will be able to use Webull, how to open, how to close trades, how to look at the charts, how to create watch lists, how to add indicators, and how to use all the important features that Webull has to offer. I'm not gonna get into every specific little detail just because Webull does have a lot of things that we can cover, but I am gonna go over the basics, like what you need in order to execute and pretty much make money in the stock market. And if you guys have not opened a Webull account yet, go to the link in the description. Right now in the month of March, they're actually running a promo where you're gonna get four free stocks valid between $8 and $1,600, I believe, if you deposit $100 after opening account. Not only that, but if you do transfer anything from Robinhood over to Webull, they are waiving that transfer fee. So let's start with the watch list real quick. If you guys want to add something to your watch list, click on the search in the top right hand corner and you have two options. You can either click on this little plus sign right next to the ticker if you've searched it before. And as you can see, it adds it to your watch list here. Or let's say you want to look up something like AMC. You click on the stock on the ticker, click on the star in the top right hand corner and it will automatically add it to your watches as well. You can also edit your watches by clicking on the little top three dots here, edit this list. You can delete something, you can arrange the order by dragging this around here, and you're pretty much free to do whatever you want with your watch list. Whenever you swipe to the right, you'll have access to what positions you have open. So just a really good way to see what you're watching and what you actually have open. Now this next feature is going to save you guys a lot of money because I know some of you pay people for a watch list and you don't need to do that with Webull. If you click on the markets button, you're going to see a lot of information on here. First thing you'll notice is that you have access to United States, cryptocurrencies, and just the global markets in general. As people who are just starting off, I'm assuming you guys are going to be taking a look at crypto in the United States majority of the time. So here within the United States, you can actually see the three major indices. The Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. And this is updated every day in real time so you can see what the markets are doing every day. As you scroll down, it'll show you how many stocks decline and how many stocks moved up that day. You have your net inflow, and then this is the good part. In my opinion, the best feature of this markets button is this. I consider this a scanner. As you can see, it tells you what stocks are top gainers, what stocks have been top losers, what stocks have been most active that day, and what ETFs were the most popular. The reason I say you guys can save a lot of money is because if you look at the top gainers and you click on pre-market, you can see all the stocks that actually are running in the morning. Majority of the time when a lot of people make these watch lists, they look at what are the top percent gainers in the pre-market. That's how they can determine what's going to be moving during the, while the market is open. And you can play around with it. You can see whatever what was the top gainer after hours in the past five minutes, in the past five days, in the past 52 weeks. But if you are one of those people that like want to know what's like the hot stock that's running that morning, the pre-market scanner is going to be like your favorite tool. And the cool thing about all this guys is it updates in real time. And if you scroll down a little bit more and the most active, it basically shows you what stocks were mostly traded that day, where, where, where the majority of the volume was at. And that's a pretty good feature to have because if you know what stocks a lot of people traded that day, you know what you can add to your watch list for the next day. I can bet you that four out of these five stocks in the most active list are going to be on people's watch list for tomorrow. And if you scroll a little bit more towards the bottom, it just tells you what are the best performing industries in the past day, in the past five days, month, three months. So this markets feature just gives you a lot of access to information that's super useful and super helpful. You can even look at cryptos. You can see what Bitcoin, Ethereum, the top three are doing. Um, everyone's favorite dogecoin you can even click on these and add them to your watch list as well you see the little star in the top right hand corner added it to my watch list and you can see here i've added dogecoin so next you have the middle button here which is your main page this is where all the action takes place pretty much so starting from the top your net account value is the amount of cash plus assets you have combined and under that you'll see your open p l which is profit and loss and this shows you how much you're up in dollar amount and percentage next if you look down a little bit more you have your market value and your cash balance what you want to keep in mind is that market value is the amount of money that you have in stocks cash balance is the amount of money that the amount of cash you have available in your account when you're looking at settled cash and unsettled cash all you guys want to make sure is that 
there is money in settled cash whenever you're gonna make a trade. Because of the money sitting under unsettled cash, it's not money that you that's available to use at the moment to make a trade. Now, if you do have more money in the account and you're using margin, there are gonna be a few other features on there that you don't see on here. And those two other features are basically show you your day trading buying power and your overnight buying power. Because whenever you're using margin, you typically have access to more capital because you're using your money, but you're also getting access to the broker's money. But if you guys are watching this video and you're just getting started, you do not want to touch margin. Leave margin alone. I forgot to mention, obviously you guys know this, you can take a look at your charts, the past month, the past six months, the past year, um, from your account, how your account's been doing pretty much. Now if you scroll down, you get a few more things. Quick trade, if you click on it, it'll allow you to type in a ticker and obviously make a quick trade, which we'll get into soon. Performance pretty much just allows you to see how your account has done. You can check how your account's been doing for the past five days, for the past six months. You can even set a custom date. So if you want to know what your account was doing just in the month of March, you can literally set it to just the month of March. And if you scroll down on performance, it'll tell you how much you've made from stocks, how much you've made from dividends, any other fees, any margin that you've paid. The transfer button, that's going to be very useful for whenever you're moving money from your bank account over to your brokerage account or when you're moving money from your brokerage to your bank account. And just to quickly get into the more, this is just going to show you a lot of account information, account details. If you want to apply for options trading, you can click on that. If you wanted to do crypto trading, you could do that. Um, just a lot of account information, account details, trade confirmations, account statements, tax documents, all that like settings and personal stuff is, is going to be sitting in the more section. And then lastly, you can see your, your positions, what positions you have open. So here you can see I have TJ Maxx, which is ticker symbol TJX. It shows you that I have four shares and they're valued at $265.36. That's what the market value is. It shows you the last price, which is whatever the stock was trading at today. And it shows you your average price. Your average price is pretty much what you paid for the stock. And then lastly, it obviously shows your P&L, how much you're up on the position. If you guys were to click on it, it pretty much gives you the same information, just kind of like on a bigger picture. The cool thing about clicking on each position is you can actually see when you executed the orders. You can see when you bought it, at what price, what date, what time. And that's obviously under here, the field records. But that's pretty much it for the main page, guys. It, th like, this is the page when you first open up the app, this is what it's gonna take you to all the time. And from here, you navigate to what you wanna do. I'm not gonna get into the community tab. You guys can do your own research on that. This is just pretty much like a, like a Twitter for stocks, I guess you can say. But what I will get into is how to execute trades. Right now it's 11 p.m., the market is closed, so I can't actually show you a live trade, but I can show you how to execute trade. If you scroll down here, you go to quick trade, Let's say you wanted to buy some GameStop, so I would type in GME, click on the ticker, and then it takes you to this page, right? Which looks kind of intimidating, but it's not that bad. So at the very top, you see this green and red bar here. That's called the level one. That just shows you the bid and the ask. So all you need to know about the bid and the ask is on the left is the bid, and that is the maximum price that a buyer is willing to pay for the stock. And on the right, you have the ask, which is the price, the, the lowest price that a seller is willing to sell the stock for. Now, if you're somebody who executes market orders, which basically are orders that get filled instantly because you are purchasing at what the market price is, then you don't have to worry about the bid and the ask. You don't have to worry about that. However, if you're doing a limit order, then it does matter. A limit order just basically allows you to select what price you want to buy or sell the stock at. So let's say GameStop was trading at $260, but you wanted to buy it at $250, then you would set your limit order to purchase at $250. After you put your limit price, you can select how many shares you wanna buy, and you can either type it in or it gives you this little bar here, which it won't work because the market is closed. I forgot to mention one thing. Now, if you are day trading on Webull on your phone and you wanna place an order, but you don't wanna place it at the market order and you wanna do a limit order, but you wanna get filled fast, the best way to do that is actually hitting the ask. So you see how when I hit the ask, it changes the limit price down here. You see how, and if I hit the bid, it changes it to the bid. If I hit the ask, it changes it to the ask. If you wanna place a limit order and you wanna get filled right away, the best thing you could do is hit the ask, which is the red side, and then you would execute your order immediately. But that's a little bit more on the advanced side. I just kinda of wanted to throw it out there. So next, after quantity, you have time and force, and in some brokers, you'll see it as TIF. TIF just stands for time and force. Now, usually, if you're executing trades while the market is open, it's gonna be set to date. All that's saying is that the order that you're placing right now 
it's going to be executed on that day. And if it doesn't get executed on that day, then the order is going to be canceled. If you don't want the order to get canceled, you could simply select GTC, which is good till canceled. But majority of time when you're making a trade, you want it to be executed on that same day. Under that, we have extended hours, which is actually really important for people who try and make trades whether it's after hours when the market is closed or pre-market before the market opens. If you're trying to execute a trade pre-market or after hours, this box has to be checked. It has to be checked. If extended hours is not checked, your order is not going to go through. Like Your order will go through, but it will never get filled. And this is a little bit more on the advanced side, but just keep this in mind. You cannot place market orders in the pre-market or in the after hours because as you can see, it doesn't give you the option to do that. It has to be a limit order. Only limit orders can be executed in the pre-market and in the after hours. So once you've done all that, once you filled out all the information, which is usually very quick, this is just taking long because I'm obviously giving an explanation, but it should be as quick as doing this, opening quick trade, clicking a ticker. I want a market order, five shares, and then I would select buy. Once you do that, it gives you a confirmation page. I tend to you know, skip the confirmation page. I don't like that. And then you would confirm your trade. Obviously right now the market is closed so it won't go through. And then as soon as you do that, after you hit buy or sell, the order will temporarily show up under open orders. So you'll see it right here. And once the order gets filled, which is usually pretty quickly depending on what options you selected, you will see it under my position. Now if you go back to your main page, you'll see your positions. You can click on it and you can either buy more of your position and it takes you to the same page where you can create your order or you can even click on sell, which is pretty much the same process. You just have to set what you want to sell the stock at. If it's a limit order and if it's a market order, then you know it's going to get filled it right away. What's up guys? So I wanted to actually show you a live trade here on Webull that I'm about to take right now. As you can see here, ticker symbol LMND, Lemonade. Um, I currently have 50 shares at $101.94. But I do want to add at least 50 more shares because I want this to be like a 10K position, a current, like a small swing position that I'm going to hold for the next week or two. So just real quick, even though I'm just showing you guys how the platform works, I guess I'll just kind of break down the trade in general. Honestly, my goal for this stock is for it to fill this gap here at around $126, $125. So that's my price target right now. Again, this isn't anything long term. It's just going to be a short term swing. I just want to play this bounce that's going to happen. But if things do not hold up, my stop loss is going to be here at around $91 and just going to cut my loss there. All right, so let's execute the trade here. I'm going to do a limit order. I wanted to hit the, the ask here, so I'm going to set it at 103.45. I'm going to do 50 shares just so I can get filled right away. Um, the stock is trading between the bid is 102.91. I don't mind getting filled at this price. Um, and let's hit buy. If I go to my positions here, you can see that I have 100 shares of Lemonade at an average price of 102.63. Market value is around 10,300. And again, from here, we can look at the quotes, we can look at the charts if we want, but that's pretty much it, guys. You can see here, I have my position, it's 100 shares, and it's been filled. Now, the last thing I wanted to get into here are the charts, because Webull does have really good charting software. I'm going to leave this part as simple as possible because every trader is different. Everyone has different indicators. Everybody knows how they like their charts set up. But all you guys need to know is that you do have options to, you know, look at different time frames on the chart. Um, you can even select the one minute chart, 15 minutes, five minutes. You can pinch it to zoom out. And you can kind of get a bigger picture of of what the chart's looking like. Um, you can even do the daily chart so you can look at the bigger picture of the chart. If you click on these little candles here, it lets you select what type of chart you look at. I think candle charts are the best, but at the end of the day, it's personal preference to whatever you guys want to select. If you click on the four little squares next to that, it gives you a lot of other options. And that on its own probably requires its own video, but I would just play around with the indicators, see what indicators you guys want to add to your charts or remove. As you can see here, every time I click on an indicator, it kind of just puts it on a chart. You can see Ichimoku clouds, MACD, moving averages, exponential moving averages. And as you click them, they also come off. So you guys mess around with that. You add whatever indicators you guys use. But the other cool thing is you can actually draw trend lines, which is pretty cool. You could do a trend line horizontal, you know, to draw those support and resistance lines. You can add text if you want. And just to quickly show you guys how a trend line works here, you would just click on wherever you want it to start. You would drag it down and you would tap and then you can kind of move it around, click on it, move it around, do whatever you want with it. Obviously, it's not as simple as being on a computer, but it gets the job done. It's 
a lot better than Robin Hood. Again, guys, there's so many features with Weeble, and this video would probably be a whole lot longer, but I just wanted to give you the basics, like what you need to get started to execute trades. I really hope this was helpful. I hope this helped you guys out. Again, if you haven't downloaded Weeble, link in the description. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments because I'm sure other people will have those same questions as well. Like if you're new to Weeble, you should now be able to open up the app, set up a watch list, look for a stock, execute a trade, and know how to play around with your account. The key is making sure you know how to get in and how to get out of a trade. Because a lot of people download these platforms, but they don't know how to do that. But anyways, if you guys stick to the end, appreciate your support. Thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.